To one off blast <laughs> to the stars. <laughs> there you go. All right, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> uh, for the listeners out there, welcome back to Geeking Poetic Podcast. Uh, I'm sure if you've been listening, you already know this, but just for the hell of it, in case you're jumping in the middle here, in the middle of our whole alien month uh, topic, uh, I am, of course, one of your hosts. Larry Roberts across the table from me is our resident, not an expert, but as close as we're going to get to one tonight, our host, Vito Marchese. And then as usual, over at the table with all the gadgets and faders <laughs> and switches and candy and pickles and aluminum foil. And I rule over all you. <laughs> yeah, you know, you should have your aluminum foil hat on right now. I should. Yeah, but. Who, who says I don't? Nobody can see me. Well, I just gave it away and said you weren't. Yeah, thanks a lot. I mean, you should just put it on right now. Oh, right. look, she's wearing oh, her well, aluminum foil there hat. It is. Is that oh, better? look, it's so pointy and shiny. <laughs> but it is our uh, resident eye roller. <laughs> I am getting very good at that <laughs> Miss Megan Guess How are you doing Megan? I'm okay, how are you boys? We're doing okay Yeah, we're doing good uh, Doing okay It's been a, been a busy month Very busy Trying to get all this stuff done Oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> We've been uh, cramming as much in Especially when we've got people that are like When are you going to put it out already? When are you going to talk about aliens? We're waiting <laughs> Yeah. Come on. It's a lot of work. We don't know it how much is. work to We should have like had a year of shows prepared before we launched the podcast. We should met- have. I, somebody was a little anxious to get going. We should have done that. That would have been the intelligent thing to do. <laughs> but we are not that. No. <laughs> no, yeah. Um well, we're trying. I mean, we're we've got a we've got a better system going yeah, right we, now. Yeah, we got a good plan in place to get it going. Yeah. So, anyway, um, as I already said, the topic. Uh, if you've listened to or, or watched or whatever, uh, our top five favorites that we did, uh, you will know that we picked our top five favorite aliens, and they were derived from movies, TV, literature. And in some cases, so-called real-life aliens, like you picked. What was it? The Greys. The Greys. Yeah. yeah. So and we're I think not, it was my number one. Yeah, we're not Where's talking about one? shades, <clears throat> shades, of, fifty shades of gray or anything like that. No, these are the quote-unquote Zeta Reticuli Greys, the Roswell Greys, whatever you want to call them. Right. You know? That I did not even realize until recently that was like an actual official term calling them the Greys. Yeah, I did. Well, just saying. <laughs> Anybody watch our trivia? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> if people haven't watched the 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 trivia torture, yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> Screw <laughs> you. Yeah, I might have given you guys some hard questions in that one. In retrospect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I think. laughs> yeah. Every time Vito was like, "This is an easy one." Like, oh shit, <laughs> we're so screwed. It's easy when you know. One of your number one like pastimes is reading and watching and studying about this shit. It used to be, man. It used to literally consume my entire life, <laughs> and I, I had to give it up, man. Until now, now I'm back into it because I've been spending the last couple weeks just back into the fucking grind, and mm-hmm. I, I know now why I stopped looking into this shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a rabbit hole you can go down forever. Mm-hmm. You're like the Michael Corleone of. Um, <laughs> Of alien conspiracy, you're like, every time I get out, they pull me back in. <laughs> so you've been, yeah, we pulled you back in. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, on that note, just so we can, like, make it clear to everybody. Okay, obviously, enthusiasts at best, none of us are experts. So right. if people, 
listen to this and they're like, these guys don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Well, we don't. I mean, and right. neither do the so-called experts because these are all theories and a lot of it is just made up bullshit, you know? Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. But yeah, who knows? Depends on who you're talking to because there are some people like we were just talking about before we started rolling, rolling, rolling <laughs> um, on the podcast that there are some people that have a lot to say about it and... I mean, I guess nobody is beyond suspicion in terms of, you know, there, there is nobody that could say is 100% credible because you never know. Yeah. But some of these people, it's like, why would they bother putting themselves in jeopardy, making themselves look ridiculous? And we'll get into some of the, who some of these people are because there's some that I admire. And, I, you know, when they come out and say these things, I go, oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> You know, that's I got to put some credence there, yeah. you know, on what he says or she says or whatever, because I don't think those people would be full of shit. But the point of the matter is, is we're, you know, we, we're not going to try and do a thing here where we're like Alex Jonesing it or something where we're like, you know, we've got the documents. We know we know this. You people, you know, this is true, you know. <laughs> About to have an aneurysm or www.ufogate.com. <laughs> there are aliens <laughs> residing right now in the back room of a pizza parlor <laughs> in Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, right. I mean, yeah, we're not that, that shit's ridiculous. Yeah. And we're not even trying. Yeah, we're not trying to be like that. But um, we're just talking about this just out of pure fun and curiosity and everything. So. Everybody just, you know, keep your panties unbunched. And uh And we clearly do not have time to touch on everything. No. Right. I mean I, we'd be here for weeks. Close. Yeah. There's so much to talk about. We're barely gonna scratch the surface. Right. And probably each topic could get its own episode. Absolutely. We can ramble on for two or three hours on. So Right, right. So, I mean, anyway, with that, you know, I guess the first thing I wanna delve into since you are the again we won't say expert the resident um enthusiast there you go um what got you started on this path what what brought what brought you to the rabbit hole in the first place as long as i can remember i've always been into aliens and i honestly can't think of where that exactly started i know i saw et i mean et was literally the first movie i ever saw when i was maybe three or four right because that came out in 82 when I was born or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the original VHS upstairs, by the way. <laughs> nice. And then, um, yeah, I was just always into it. And then later on, I, I clearly remember watching Fire in the Sky, mm -hmm. which was loosely based on Travis Walton's experience, which Travis claims he was abducted. He was a, um, a logger in Arizona, I believe, or New Mexico. And him and seven of his pals after work were driving by, and they saw what is supposedly a UFO, and Travis got knocked out, abducted, and was gone for like five days. And to this day, none of those people have changed their story about what happened to him. He passed a lie detector test. His friends passed a lie detector test. Mm -hmm. There was a trial that said that his, their friends killed Travis, but Travis came back like five days later, he dehydrated, and he had like this experience. And the movie like sensationalized it. I guess it doesn't happen exactly like Travis says, but there's a scene in that movie that to this, even thinking about it, scares the shit out of me, and I have a hard time going back to it, is the, like, it's not an autopsy, but they have Travis on a table, and this powder stuff comes down, and it traps him, like this sil silicone latex shit, and he can't breathe, and they're stuffing this needle in his eye and shit. It's uh. fucking scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's really freaky. <laughs> but, uh, so, real quick, I mean, wouldn't there be any way for him to then go to a doctor after that i mean because any kind anytime you have any sort of invasive anything it, it leaves traces there is no way to completely avoid scar tissue and everything there's yeah. no i mean couldn't they have just done that and they might have i don't know the exact specifics because like i said the movie is different than what supposedly happened to him in real life okay so i don't know exactly how much of that procedure happened to him you know right that might have just been hepped up for the movie yeah and they would probably just say he did it to himself right oh well that's true because i saw some where people it's like she had clearly marks all up and down her where they experimented on her 
and she's like, well, she's just hurting herself. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And there are doctors who have removed objects from people that claim to have been alien implants. Like I think Dr. Roger Lear was one of those. He's since deceased and he had an, a website called Alien Scalpel. And he actually like got people into his office and like took stuff out of them, like metal objects that should not have been in their bodies, <laughs> which is kind of fucked up if you think about it. Yeah. Right. Whether or not that's true or it's some kind of weird, you know, build up of some kind of material in your body that kind of naturally happens. I'm not sure, okay. you know, but. Hmm. Or they put it there themselves. That's true. Yeah. Right. Hmm. It's always about the he said, she said bullshit. <laughs> Man, we're all, we should, people are going to be listening to this and be like, why do they keep referencing Limp Biscuit? Because just for no good reason at all before we started rolling, 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 <laughs> before we started rolling uh, the uh, hard disk, so to speak, Um, we, uh, I, yeah, I made the joke about the whole Roland song thing and then we got into a whole thing about Wes Borland probably being an alien and Fred Durst wishing aliens would just come take him away <laughs> you know and everything but yeah I apologize in advance people if there's just constant <laughs> Limp Biscuit new metal references and stuff because it's hard to get away from those uh, references unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> they're too easy man yeah but anyway, um, so, okay, so, yeah, things like E.T., but, I mean, that's one thing, but what got you so invested in the whole, like, conspiracy aspect, you know, where, I mean, you, you, I know just from talking to you, you know these dudes' names, like, uh, the different, again, so-called experts and authors, like, so what, what got you hooked into that where you were like, I'm all in? Okay, so when I was a kid, I was really obsessed with daytime talk shows like <laughs> Jenny Jones, oh Ricky boy. Lake, Maury Povich, and my boy, Montel Williams. <laughs> okay. Now, Montel Williams a few times had this guy who used to take people to the Area 51 site and literally go UFO watching with them. Okay. And I saw this episode and I was like, holy shit. Like, aliens have this yeah and they show like ufos buzzing around making these 90 degree turns that are literally impossible for us to do in the technology supposedly that we had at that time and then i found out about bob lazar who he was interviewed in 89 or 90 saying that he worked at area 51 and he was tasked to reverse engineer spacecraft to find out what the propulsion system was and his story is pretty incredible mm -hmm. he He's he's not out to like make money and he doesn't have like this ego that some other ufologist and alien hunter people do like he's right. telling you like I don't believe me but I'm telling you this is what happened he would take people he was like one of the first people to break the area 51 story he took people and told them look on Wednesday night f come up here with me and you're going to see these spaceships Yeah cuz didn't his wife like think he was he was always gone, but he couldn't tell her where he's gone. So she started cheating on him. Yeah. And so he came back because he thought he was in danger. So he went and told all his family and friends, like, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what's happening. All this stuff. And then he started taking him up there. And he got away with it like three or four times yeah. before they were busted. Is that right? Yeah. And people had supposedly shot at him on his way home and stuff like that. So he's like, I better go public to save yeah. my ass so people don't kill me. Yeah. Because if I'm talking all this stuff, they're going to be less likely to come after me. Because it's going to kind of prove my point, right? Yeah, exactly. Ooh, I don't want to drop my beer. Yeah. <laughs> don't spill the Who Garden. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I just, what he said is he worked at this place called S4, which was a, like, a, kind of like a base that was built into the side of a mountain where they had about, I think, nine spaceships in there. And he said they used this gravitational drive technology where it wasn't based on thrust. Um, he described it as these three, like almost like lampshade looking things that hang down below the craft. And depending on what formation they're in, they could make like a gravity well in front of the ship. So instead of a ship being, you know, thrust, you know, throwing thrust out the back to move forward, it actually created this divot in space time using gravity. So it was like the spaceship was going downhill. Okay. And that's how it moved. So it was almost getting pulled instead of pushed away. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. 
So that's pretty that neat. Makes sense. And he said that they were powered by this thing called Element 115, which we didn't know what Element was, 115 was in the 80s and 90s. It wasn't discovered until 2003. Okay. Now, some people are like, well, yeah, but you can say that we're going to eventually discover it. So that's why you just called it 115, you know, just because, right. you know, that'll prove your point. We eventually do that. So right. I'm not a physicist. I don't know that much about the periodic table, so I can't really comment on that. <laughs> but supposedly they were able to make 115, but it only lasted for a couple nanoseconds before it was unstable. Hmm. But apparently Bob says this element can only be made like in space around star clusters or something like that. So obviously we didn't have that here. We had to get it from an outside source, right? which basically meant aliens brought it here. But once those spaceships run out of that element... We, we can't power them anymore, so we're kind of screwed. Hmm. It's a pretty interesting story, man. Yeah. That gravitational drive, like, that's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know? yeah, and isn't there... I mean, obviously they have it, so the, the whole thing is is that in addition to the aliens had that and, and now they believe that the government is using that technology kind of covertly sort of, you know, that right. they're trying to build stuff using that, uh, you know, um, what do you want to call it? Fuel Not, source or whatever. Yeah, like uh, the, the supersonic kind of craft sort of stuff mm -hmm. that they're they're using that. Yeah. That even some of the the uh, things that people are seeing, because that, that's always the thing, too, is with a lot of, like, the, the UFO sightings and stuff, there's nothing that says that every time you see a UFO, it necessarily means it's coming from... UFO means unidentified flying object. doesn't mean it's from space. space. Right. So the thing is, is, you know, that's a famous thing. People say, oh, well, the military is testing, you know, secret, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but where did they get that secret uh, uh, technology from in the first place? I mean... Or maybe we just have really smart Nazi scientists that we scooped up after the war. Wow. That came back, helped fund, you know, help build NASA, you know, with Operation Paperclip. Because supposedly the Nazis had some kind of UFO technology. That's we're, another theory. Whether they I got was, it from aliens or they engineered it themselves. I was going to say, we're jumping right <laughs> into the Nazi theories already, huh? <laughs> Boy, you just couldn't wait. But to before get out that, of it. I was going to say Area 51 <laughs> was designed as the test station for black ops projects like the SR 71 Blackbird, right? The F 117 Stealth Bomber. Right. Now, we didn't find out about the Stealth Bomber till Desert Storm, but there's records showing that they started funding that project in the early to mid 80s. Okay. So it was literally 10 years, well, not 10 years, but almost 10 years before the public knew what it was. Mm -hmm. Same with the Blackbird. I think that was 70. Yeah, well, we knew Six. well we knew about that by the what eighties, right? It? Yeah, yeah, because that was basically a Cold War spy plane. Mm -hmm. Same with I think the U two, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So those were in development ten years before we knew about them. So you come to think, well, this technology does seem futuristic to us, but what if they've been developing it for fifteen twenty years and then we found out about it? You know, that's one possibility. You know, it might not be alien technology, right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, here's my question real quick to you guys while we're talking about on the subject of just technology. So, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> burping. Um, so here's the thing. I know we have a lot of really intelligent people out there. We've, we've seen, gosh, I mean, the stuff we see even like eight-year-olds that are capable <clears throat> capable of doing now. You know, people have just, it seems like people have gotten rapidly smarter and smarter and smarter, especially when it comes to science and math and stuff. But it always just seemed kind of weird to me that suddenly we had this massive growth when it came to technology, just in the grand scheme of things overnight. And it just makes me wonder where some of this maybe originated mm -hmm. from. I know there have been theories where people say, well, it's because we got some of this tech back in the 40s. And, you know, 
everything well i mean one thing that is not a theory one thing that is a fact i think i could say this is a fact is that a majority of the tech that we have nowadays um small phone you know sm- small cell phones all the small mini mini you know process microprocessors mm-hmm. chips all these things everything started out being developed by the government or governments every single thing your cell phone it's mostly started with because the, the military needed it it's and eventually trickled down to always starts with military interesting the way i understand it is it always starts with military things that you know or nasa i think too and well it's still i mean yeah it's all they're kind of connected it's all know. all government is what i'm saying like it's not like um you know, some of these things just started in some guy's shop in fucking Switzerland or yeah. something like that. You know, like it, this all started in it's all military things that eventually then became, you know, public allowed use. to be you know mass produced for the public and stuff. But things that are like new technology now to us where we're going, oh, wow, look, can you believe it does this now? It's like the government is the military have already had this for years you know mm-hmm. like this was all stuff that was developed for years and years you know by them and i i think it's fair to say that's like pretty much fact like i, I don't I think, think so yeah i don't think that's you know maybe not every single thing but i i think most tech that we have now so but so my point being is that if it if it originated from the scientists and the geniuses and stuff that were working and being paid for and funded by the government then it's like well then doesn't it stand a reason that they could have gotten the information they needed to even start doing that stuff from possible studying of you know craft or technology you know things that that were from space i mean <clears throat> The whole Roswell thing. I mean, I know it, the, the funny thing about Roswell is it's become so like you say it. Nobody even you know what I mean? Like yeah. nobody even flinches. There have been so many shows and TV shows and books and movies and cartoons and jokes. I mean, it's practically a joke. Like mm-hmm. everybody's like, oh, Roswell, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. There's but crazy kooks out there. But the whole Roswell thing, I mean, there's a lot to that story. It's funny that people don't talk a little bit more about that there's a lot of inconsistencies with what the government tells you happened and the time frame of some of their projects that they say that project was you know well here's the so here's the whole thing i don't know if you guys well you probably do know but just for the listeners whatever (laughs) so as everybody basically probably knows roswell was a uh, based on an incident that happened in roswell new mexico in 1947 this didn't just start as something that some goofy guy standing you know on a hill and roswell was like i saw you know flying saucer and it came down it crashed and no that's not how it started it started because the u.s air force released a press statement (laughs) then the the fucking air force themselves released a press statement saying a flying disc was was crashed and recovered in in roswell we have no idea what it was very quickly like the next day or something like the next day whoever it was in the air force that let that information out marcel or something like that Mar- yeah jesse marcel was the guy that got photographed and he had a recant he's i think he's the one that told the papers and then they made yeah, him recant the story and yeah. Right. And yeah. <laughs> so it was withdrawn and then and then they real quick came back and they were like oh no 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 it, it was a mistake it was a weather balloon and it's like totally. and it's like well okay first of all you know how do you mistake i've seen weather balloons have you seen weather? i know what a weather fucking balloon looks like you know mm-hmm. I mean, how do you go from flying disc to a weather balloon? You know, like how how do you make that big of a mess up? You know, they worked really hard for years after that to just kind of brush that off. Ah, that was just you know, no, well, you know, no, don't don't ever think don't ah no that one guy he blah blah blah, and it wasn't until like the seventies and eighties and stuff when people started going back and certain information started becoming declassified some people started talking a little bit more you know especially some of them on their deathbeds literally saying mm-hmm. you know 
Right. Um, here, I'm going to refer to notes here. Uh, it was Br- uh, Brigadier General Arthur Exxon. Exxon, not not related to the, the gas. Exxon power gun. Yeah. <laughs> Life goes on and Exxon <laughs> is there. This Brigadier General Exxon, uh, former commanding officer uh, of Wright-Patterson AFB. He told uh, researcher Kevin Randall and Donald Schmidt that a spacecraft had crashed, alien bodies were recovered, and the event was covered up by the U.S. government. Now, the thing is, is even since then, there have been other people who have come forward that worked in the government to varying degrees that later when they were older and probably saying, well, at this point, I'm fuck it. Fuck it, you know, they're going to come after me, they're going to come after me. Have come forward and and substantiated that to varying degrees, you know, and said, I never saw the bodies, but I was told there were bodies. There were three to five bodies, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. One of them was still alive to some degree. The others were dead. Like, it seems believable, man. I'm sorry. It just seems it just seems to me like the way it came out, the how it's come out, the way, you know, I don't subscribe to the whole thing where I understand why people say this, but I don't subscribe to the whole thing where people sit there and say, well, if this was true, it would be so much more out there by now, blah, blah, blah. I don't I don't necessarily know if that's true. I think if it was something that happened in 2017, that would be harder to redact and cover up and everything. But I think with back then, it was a different time, you know. I mean, people had more faith, I think, in their government back then. Well, and I, th- yeah. you know, and I think the people that worked in the government were more. I mean, and everybody, you know, if you lived on an air base in New Mexico, it's not, you know, how many people did you really know? How many people did you really talk to? A good majority of those people, if they even lived into the seventies, you know, lived that long. I mean, you know. They had a whole different kind of mentality where they kept their mouth shut. That was why they got into the positions that they did was because they were scrutinized and found to be people that would keep their mouth shut. Yeah. Right. Especially with the fear of if we let this information get out, what's what are the commies going to do with it? You know, there was that whole there was always fear. Everything was controlled by fear back then. You know. If you let this get out, then it's fear, and not not you know not to mention fear of knowing what could happen to you and your family and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I don't think it, you know, I don't think that it's as hard to cover that kind of shit up and sweep it under the rug as people like to think it is, especially in a case like this where it was the government it was the air force the military that found it and everything in the first place you know i think it would have been harder had this been again so, you know if a disc crashed in the middle of fucking downtown detroit or something like that and hundreds of people saw it and this and that yeah i you know the real world it's not like men in black where you've got the right. little thing that you can <laughs> z- forget. Yeah. zap people's brains and make them forget i think that would have been you know but I, I, anyway, I, sorry. The point of the matter is, is I, I just I believe in the Roswell incident. There's just so much stuff that's happened since then. And uh, yeah, because one of the government theories of the explain the bodies away is they said that they were working on a project to do these high altitude parachute yeah, jumps. They were dummies. Yeah. It wasn't like 10 years later. Yes. Yeah. So that kind of throws and they that out of the, the window. Same size. Right. They were like six foot dummies, but these were four foot alien yeah. bodies. Also, the thing with Roswell is that <clears throat> apparently in the 90s, the military released these reports saying that, OK, OK, you know, finally, once and for all, what it was, was it was it wasn't just a weather balloon. It was a nuclear test balloon thing um, from I don't even remember what this is. Looking at another Project Mogul. Project Mogul. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh. You know, just saying it's, you know, come on, get over it, debunk. But We're just trying to test if Russia's firing off nukes or whatever. I think that's what the project was supposed to be about, and they're trying to cover a project mogul. So they, that's another theory is that the government started this rumor that it was an alien spacecraft to detract from the, the public really knowing about, yeah. Something which, to talk about. Yeah, I don't, I don't really buy that. Then why would no. they come out and say it was a weather balloon then, you know? That doesn't make much sense. If they had gone through with the whole 
thing and dragged it out more, I would believe that theory. I would say, oh, yeah, that was it. They actually came up with an alien conspiracy to cover up what they were really doing with this nuclear stuff. It was literally the next day they... But they literally redacted it right right yeah. away. So, you know, what? Did they re- did they take it back because they went, oh, no, this is going to get people too worked up, too. It's not a good plan. Well, I mean, shit, son's... <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't <laughs> some- <laughs> right, yeah. shouldn't somebody who came up with that first? I mean, I don't... I don't know. The other theory is that it's it wasn't aliens. It was time travelers from the future that came back. And those people, those aliens are really us from the future. <laughs> And that's why we have the technology from that because it's just literally our tech, but a thousand years from now or whatever. Well, now if we get into that whole thing, we're talking about what was that I brought up yesterday, the Philadelphia experiment yeah. thing with yeah. uh, what? what's that guy's name um, saying the story first appeared in 55 and letters of unknown origin sent to a writer and astronomer, Morris K. Jessup. Jessup. <laughs> Morris <laughs> Jessup. Damn you, Jessup. <clears throat> Widely understood to be a hoax. It's an interesting... Uh, yeah, oh, it was two letters from... That's what his name was. Carlos Miguel Allende. Hmm. Identified himself as Carl M. Allen. He claimed to have uh, been part of a World War II secret uh, experiment at the Philly uh, Naval Shipyard. He said that this experiment uh, destroyed uh, USS Eldridge. Mm-hmm. And made it invisible, rendered it invisible, teleported to New York, then teleported to another dimension where it encountered aliens, and then teleported through space and time. And it actually killed, like, people died. People got melded into literally the hole of the ship. Right. (laughs) Exactly. Like, they were half and half inside the ship, outside the ship, like, still alive. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fascinating story. A lot of bullshit in it, though, but... Pretty, pretty fantastic story. I'll take your word on that one. <laughs> well, you know, you say it's bullshit, but at the same time, around that same time, you had people like L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard creating, you know, Dianetics and all yeah. that and going, hey, well, I'm creating a whole <laughs> religion, you know, mm. and there are people that... People that follow? That, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't they say Scientology, it's like the richest or the second richest people in in uh, business in California. And they're all, I think, tax exempt because they're they're counted as a religion. Wow. I mean, they literally take thousands of, tens of thousands of dollars from their members every year to be a part of their their cult. Well, that's why they want all rich people like John Travolta (laughs) and Tom Cruise in them. Because they're bankrolling their entire lifestyle, man. You know why? Because the Scientologists are rolling, 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 <laughs> keep rolling, ro- No. <coughs> I'm sorry. Keeps coming back to it. Well, we all know one fact. Roswell had nothing to do with Lord Zenu, so I think we're safe from that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, all right, I, so I, I got I to gotta ask, though, and I, I keep jumping around and everything, but so this whole Nazi thing, so... <clears throat> I mean, there have been so many different Nazi, alien, whatever kind of. You mentioned, obviously, Project Paperclip and all that stuff. I mean, so you're the guy. You tell me, what, what is with this Nazi shit? <laughs> well, apparently, so I, I don't quote me verbatim because I don't know exactly all the details. It's been a while since I looked into it. But apparently, once World War II ended, we went up, we went in and scooped up a bunch a bunch of German scientists that were, weren't part of Hitler's regime, obviously. Mm-hmm. And apparently the Russians came in and took some as well. And from those scientists we took, we got a lot of tech. You know, we started NASA with those guys. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of stuff that came out of that. I mean, the Germans had a lot of fucking shit that could have won the war, man. Yeah, you know? well, that's true. So... I mean, America was like, fuck, we got to get these guys on our team right now because we need that that science and, and knowledge, you know? So the, apparently the Nazis had this thing called the Wunderwaffe <laughs> <laughs> or a wonder weapon, mm-hmm. which there's a, some theories that say it was like this bell-shaped object that could levitate. It was either a UFO, a time travel machine, um, some kind of 
radiation genetic changing thing. James Rollins actually has a book called The Black Order that's about the Nazi bell. Mm. It's pretty pretty cool. Oh, okay. Pretty cool read. So apparently this Nazi bell was able to do some shit, whatever. But in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania in 1965, a bell-shaped UFO crash landed that apparently mm. looked and people said had the exact specifications as the Nazi bell. Okay. So we're, you know, what if this bell-shaped object was a new <clears throat> ship that we were testing and it crash landed? Or if it was a time travel device, what if something went horribly wrong in the 40s and it traveled through time, crash landed in 65 in Pennsylvania and we scooped it up? <laughs> those are a couple different theories about that. Okay. Whether you believe those or not, I guess it's up to you, the listener. <laughs> <laughs> but they're pretty fascinating, I think. You know, it's one more... I guess if you're making a list of aliens, not aliens, you could possibly put that, you know, some of that tech was just Nazi engineering and knowledge from the war that we kind of stole and we expanded upon it and kind of developed it into something else. You know, I don't know. Right. But what made them so advanced? I don't know. Maybe an alien. alien? Well, that's crashed, what I, you know. Antarctica? Yeah. Yeah, oh. they did. Yeah. Are we going to get, okay, let's get, <laughs> let's. Let's delve into the Antarctica thing. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently Hitler had a base made in Antarctica, like a submarine base. Mm -hmm. And I've heard some wild theories about this. One, which correlates into the hollow earth theory, which mm -hmm. there's a hole. That's, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> At either pole, there's a hole that literally goes into the center of the earth. And one of those holes is by this Nazi base in Antarctica. And apparently, was it Admiral Byrd? I think he was an okay. American explorer that went down there. Okay. And apparently he said that he found this cave mm -hmm. and he went into the cave and there was like these levitating ships with swastikas on them. Mm -hmm. And he saw like animals and stuff in this <laughs> cave. Obviously, I do not believe that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but there was, um, was it Operation High Jump? Where they they took a yeah. fleet down to Antarctica, yeah. like right. right, literally right after World War II, mm -hmm. like thirteen warships. The, the U-boats. Yeah. Right after the war, yeah. like a year later, they sent a whole fleet down there for yeah. some reason. So like thirteen warships and like mm -hmm. forty seven hundred soldiers went down to Antarctica, yeah. right when America had just spent a shit ton of money for this war and were sending people down there for what reason, you know? Right. And apparently, after six or seven days, like they went back because there was a bunch of deaths and stuff. Interesting. Yeah. So obviously some of those were natural because literally they tried to bring gigantic bulldozers and tanks <laughs> and they just fell through the fucking ice. <laughs> like obviously don't bring that shit down there, you know, but some people say that, you know, there was UFOs down there. I guess Admiral Byrd had done a um, an interview with somebody in Argentina and he said that there's like a, a massive threat that's going to hit the United States and it's going to come from the poles because there's some ships out there that can attack with devastating speed from the poles. Mm -hmm. And they not Polish people. No, not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what those guys, what, what can they do, you know? You know throw pierogies <laughs> yeah. at us, you know? <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> Leave it to me to just mm -hmm. completely. Derail the whole thing. Yeah. Well, didn't they, just, was it recently or something that they found that an actual, the first pyramid? I heard that. Argentina? Or Argentina, god damn it. Antarctica. 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 I heard that. And that's like the first one that all the other ones have been based off of. Mm. Supposedly. So it's alien versus predator all yeah. over again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And like there is the, like the ra alien races were down there in Antarctica. And then what is it the like a hopping snake or something like right, that. Right, right, right. Yeah, it was like... It's it was a leaping snake. Leaping snake, it leaping. Yeah. There's no legs on a snake, but whatever. But um, it came down and it hit Antarctica, and then all those beings were gone. So their thing is, is it, was it like the comets that came down, and that, that's what changed it to ice after that? Or was we were deliberately attacked by another mm, being to take out that race? I did hear the asteroid comet theory before, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. And apparently, I mean, Antarctica <laughs> used to be a temperate climate, you know, how many millions of years ago when Pangaea was one continent. Right. So it's safe to assume that, you know, either at least some kind of, because I think they found dinosaur fossils in Antarctica. 
if I'm not mistaken. Really? Yeah, which is kind of messed up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, something that I personally subscribe to is Graham Hancock's theory that there was an advanced civilization way before humans, before the last ice age, you know. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. Oh, Christ. We started. <laughs> we get rebooted. into... Rebooted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we get into... That's, a, that's a whole different episode, but... Right, yeah, because I'd love, you know, I'd love to sit there and talk about you know the ancient egyptians and just uh, there's so much weird yeah because they have a temple of edfu or whatever that, yes that mm-hmm. says all about this antarctica and the aliens there that came and gave us this technology so how would they yeah how same thing with uh with the sumerians which is the first recorded civilization that we know of right now since then we've had gobekli tepe and all these other ancient monuments that are tens of thousands of years older before that, but the Sumerians said that gods from the sky, the Anunnaki, came and gave them all this advanced knowledge mm-hmm. of all the planets in our solar system and astronomy lessons and all this, and that's yep, that's pretty fucking interesting, man. Yeah. yeah. Now, see, that starts getting into things that I find more credible. Mm-hmm. I don't know about Nazis living <laughs> in center of the, earth. the center of, yeah, in a, in a, in a portal... <laughs> Well, you you'd know. think differently if you saw the movies Nazis at the Center of the Earth, starring <laughs> Jake Busey. And did we not just talk about <laughs> Pacific Rim, where they came out of a portal from the middle of the Earth? Yep. We did. Yeah. Shit happens. Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a guy on a ten-speed Schwinn come riding out of a riding out of a portal oh. on a, on Avenue K. <laughs> See, you in, know, in Hegwish, Illinois, once. <laughs> People are like, what the fuck is he talking about? It's true. <laughs> I'm telling you. I seen a dude. Avenue K is a weird street, man. Three blocks long. That's it. It is literally, there's all sorts of other avenue, you know, F, G, H, J. But Avenue K, man, it's only three blocks long. And on the one end, it's just like a weird swampy forest <laughs> thing. Seriously, at the one end, it, the, the street ends and there's like a, it's like swampy forest kind of whatever. There's nothing there, right? And the one day I was driving down the cross street and I seen this guy come riding out of Avenue K on his 10 speed bike and he was wearing like bell bottoms and he had like a print shirt on, kind of like a Greg Brady looking type <laughs> shirt. And his hair was slightly longish or whatever. Now, I mean, the thing is, is okay, you know, maybe it's just a dude that likes to dress, you know, 70s style. style, you know, like I, I dig that shit. But I mean, this was like fucking authentic. Even his bike, I was like, that's, you know, it looked like an old 1977 Schwinn, you know, and he's riding on this bike and he came right now. And I'm just like. Well, clearly he has to live on that block because he couldn't have came from anywhere. It was a dead end block. So he came riding out onto onto the main street that I was driving and I was driving behind him. I slowed real slow. <laughs> I got real slow and I, we were driving behind him and I'm like, look at this dude. You know, and we uh, and Jess saw him too. So it wasn't just me. And we were looking at each other like, look at that guy, man. That guy's real groovy looking, man. Like, like, so... And then he turned onto Burnham Avenue and heading kind of back in the same direction, you know, and I kept going straight and she was yelling at me. She was like, Where, why, why, why aren't you following him? And I'm like, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> so I like so I like real quick pulled a U turn and I turned back. on. I turned on to Burnham Avenue in the direction he was going. He wasn't there anymore. Disappeared. He did. <laughs> He did, I mean, I we looked around for him, and there's not really anywhere. I mean, literally, unless in that matter of twenty seconds or whatever it was, he pulled into some yard there. You know what I mean? Like, and managed to just completely get out of sight. Like he just fucking disappeared. It's like these crazy people are following me. I need to hide. Maybe <laughs> I mean, jumped maybe. in the bush, <laughs> or maybe. It was some dude that discovered, uh, you know, that accidentally went through kind of like Jake Epping and yeah, eleven twenty two sixty three, right? Like just 
literally stumbled upon. <laughs> You know, maybe he was some dude. He was partying in that forest area there back in the seventies. They were having a cat. It only goes back to nineteen seventy four or something, <laughs> right? Well, it's just like the portal in in the Stephen King book. It's like it always goes back to the same point. Maybe it's a fixed point portal, and maybe this dude like drove. You know, was like in the forest, and then he was like, "Oh shit, guys, I got to roll. I got to get out of here." You know, or may, or maybe like you know, yeah, he might have had some dubs on him or something, and he starts rolling. And next thing you know, he finds himself on Avenue K, but it's not 1977 anymore. Now it's 2007. <laughs> you know, because this happened like yeah, like a ten years ago or so, something like that. You know, and maybe he went and he was just like, whoa, you know, like what's going on? Like this is, you know, trippy. And maybe he turned back. Maybe he went back to, into the portal. I don't I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know how portals work, man. <laughs> but all I know, all I know is for people that I'm telling you there's a fucking time portal or some shit on Avenue K. Strange things are afoot <laughs> at Avenue K. I think I'm making it up, but. <laughs> some things just can't be explained. Maybe somebody out there can back you up and say they've seen something weird over there. No, Any of our listeners, let it, us know. Yeah, I mean, it's Hegwish. You see a lot of weird things in Hegwish, <laughs> you know. It's, it's named Hegwish, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah. He's just asking for it. <laughs> yeah. When, when we start talking about things like the aliens visiting old uh civilizations on earth and stuff like that man there's a there's just there's an awful lot of stuff there mm -hmm. to uh maybe not completely substantiate it but at least make you go hmm there's just so many things that are unexplained i mean how and and it is weird that they seem to have all this knowledge that was beyond their means but then ensuing further uh generations didn't yeah you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it was so i don't know yeah either they got it from aliens or they found you know the remains from an ancient civilization that did have that knowledge but it was lost during the ice age or another cataclysmic event you know yeah i suppose that could be true or the aliens cyclic cyclically told them there you go how to create this stuff. They put it in their heads and like, oh, it's, I came up with this idea, but it really didn't come from them. Well, I yeah. mean, there's theories that some of the Egyptians were aliens or were bred from aliens. Mm -hmm. so you see those statues of them where that they made back then of like Nefertiti mm -hmm. and them where they have the long, yeah. elongated heads. And people go, oh, well, maybe that was just the art style or whatever. But it's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> it seems like the kind of thing that if you you know back then it was pretty savage and if you're like the king and you you know you you got queen nefertiti and you commission some sculptor guy you know to say you know make me a statue or whatever and they make a statue of you with some fucking elongated ass fucking weird xenomorph style <laughs> fucking shaped eggplant head <laughs> And an elongated torso and all this that that just makes you look fucking ugly, basically. If if you were Queen Nefertiti and somebody came, you wouldn't cut his fucking head off. You'd be like, "That's what I look like to you." <laughs> well, maybe they're like those those Indian tribes where they elongate their necks. They think it's they think that's beauty. So they have these babies. They elongate oh, yeah. their heads. No, that's, they're Japanese. Instead. Some Japanese would you know. Binding the, the binding toes the feet. and yeah. stuff. I think there's some yeah. South American cultures that had the elongated skull thing yeah. too. So. Okay, yeah, they bind it. Okay, yeah. so that that's see, but that's good. That's all valid. That could be valid. But those people could have been imitating the gods from the sky that they wanted to come back. And, like, listen, yeah. we're then doing this that. for you. And come back. We're back. You know? <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. It all comes back it all around. Comes back around. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so. That's what. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it just. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, kind of like you're saying, we don't have time to talk about everything in depth. I mean, we just dabble in all these things, but I'd love to sometime really go through and just talk about all these things in depth. Because the, the whole thing about ancient Egypt and all that kind of stuff and the Sumerians and all that stuff, too, like that fascinates yeah, me. Yeah, that fascinates the shit out of me. You know, when I was doing Divinity Compromised, that first album, I wrote a lot of lyrics and almost all the lyrics were about 
the Sumerians, the ancient Egyptians, and nice. theories revolving around the soul going through the tunnels in the pyramid to Orion's right. belt, the Anunnaki coming to Earth. and That's why I like that one yeah. so much. And here's a fun fact. Jason Martell, who's a host on Ancient Aliens, I messaged him and told him I have this band, and a lot of the lyrics that I do is based on your work. Here's some videos. He saw the videos, got back to me, and he said, hey, listen, Give me your phone number. I want to call you so we can talk. No shit. No shit. I gave him my phone number, and he never called me. Oh. Aww, so, man. Jason, if you're listening right now, buddy, I'm still waiting for your call. <laughs> we could really use it. Yeah. Well, hey, man, it, you know, <laughs> at least you caught his attention. Mm-hmm. You know, he's probably a busy guy. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, probably just one of those things where it's like, oh. Well, it's yeah. been 10 years, man. You think you'd give me a call? No, oh, mm-hmm. I'm sure he forgot. <laughs> Too eager. Give, give him time, dude. I I can't. I can't. You yeah, know. I don't what? know. I don't know what the etiquette is <laughs> right? for, for right? Just, you know texting a guy. Play, play How cool. Long you, yeah. Play cool, Vito. It's okay. I've been playing it cool, Megan, for ten <laughs> years. Just give me two more years. Just take off. It'll be okay. I mean, I I can't say anything because I'm sure there's people out there that are like, yeah, I fucking know, Larry. I'm terrible with stuff. Like, there's people that are that'll be like, hey, man, like. They'll message me and they'll be like, hey, man, do you want to like, are you interested in like, uh, you know, big fan and are you interested in like playing on, uh, you know, I'm doing a CD or whatever and I'll like get back to them. They'll be like, yeah, sure. Cool. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like we'll talk in a couple of weeks and I will literally remember like four years later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling this is a true story. If the dude that I, this has happened multiple times, I don't know what I'm trying to pretend it's like one dude. <laughs> I'm terrible about that. Like I have so I'm so scatterbrained, and I have so many, I have a hard time keeping track of things. So when that kind of stuff happens, that's not in my normal focus. It doesn't mean I'm not interested in it. Like it's like oh wow okay you know like that's cool. But and I intend on trying to make it fit in there, but then I just get so distracted, you know. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it, the best thing to do, although sometimes some dudes will be like, fucking lay off. But <laughs> but unfortunately, the best thing to do, if it's anything like that, like with me, is you have to remind them. You don't want to be annoying about it. But yeah, maybe you know. it's been Actually, years, I'm going to remind him right okay. now. Yeah, do that. Oh, Jesus. No, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Jason, I emailed you 10 years ago and you never called me back. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I might, but not tonight. Jason's gonna be like writing a letter, dear YouTube. I would like to report a program a violation of terms of service. Yeah. Uh, I would like to report this geeking poetic podcast um, for slander. Yeah, they're slander and harassment. Harassment, exactly. <laughs> no, but for real, if, if you guys are interested in the Sumerian lore, you've got to check out Jason Martell. Um, he's got a lot of amazing information about that stuff. Well, that le- that's that's a perfect segue, Vito, because that leads me to another thing. Is because again, I hear you mention certain people. They've been like yesterday, or the other day, we were watching the thing, and you were just like, "Oh, that's blah blah blah." I know that guy. I know who that guy is. For people that are listening to this, that are like, "Oh, this stuff's kind of interesting." Like, can you make some specific recommendations? Uh, whether it's writers or podcasters, specific books, specific shows whatever make can, do you know any yeah the top so of your head? Uh, we just talked about jason martell so if you go to www.xfax.com or ancientschool.com you can find out his information um another one is graham hancock i don't remember what his website is it might just be grahamhancock.com but okay. graham hancock theorizes that there's an ancient civilization way before modern day humans that existed and got wiped out during the last ice age, and that's why we don't have any remnants of their technology or their writing or anything. But we're slowly discovering that things are a lot older than we initially thought they were. Right. Well, that's true. Yeah. Especially well, when we get to the Egypt stuff, I've got other guys too. But um, for the alien stuff, check out Bob Lazar. His story. They literally just made a new movie called Bob Lazar Area Fifty One. Yeah. UFO, something like that. Yeah, it's just coming out, isn't it? Yeah, it just came out. A few weeks ago, I think, and I'm mad because I didn't get a chance to watch it before this episode. But it's a newer interview with Bob. I think he kind of goes throughout the past 20 years or whatever, kind of tells you his story again and maybe some new information. Hmm. So that's one to check out for sure. Yeah, the Area 51 uh, thing, it just came out in 2018. Yes, yeah. yeah. 
And uh, the Graham Hancock, it is GrahamHancock.com. Okay, cool. Yeah. That it? I mean, uh, I off the top of my head right now, yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Well, real quick, I'm just shifting over to my left here for a second. That'd be me. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so, obviously, I know you're not as into this stuff as, as Vito is. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody we know is. No. <laughs> <laughs> but... Now, I know you've always been sort of interested in, and there was a time that you wanted to be uh, enlisted in the Air Force. There was, yes. Ooh. Now, what made you want to be part of the Air Force? My entire family is military, and they always told me, if you ever go military, go Air Force. Mm-hmm. So I wanted Air Force. Oh, okay. You know, the Air Force are the ones that obviously are always kind of connected with. Well, of course, because they're flying objects. Right. So, so be, there'd be the ones out there in the skies coming across yeah. the UFOs. It ain't going to be the Army Rangers, probably, you know? No, but I just mean, like, was you've always been sort of a space enthusiast and stuff and a Trek nerd, as we all know. Yeah. Everything. Was that, did that contribute at all to your... No. No? No. Or are you just saying that to try and keep you and your family out of trouble? Maybe. I, what? Has your family seen the UFO in combat? In combat, no. In combat, no. I have seen UFOs oh. twice. Well, that's kind of where I was leading, was because <laughs> I was curious if your if your if your uh, your uh, close encounters, uh, you know, had anything to do with also wanting to. Because obviously, if you go went into the Air Force, there is the off chance that you would be able to. Yeah, know possibly more. coming more into contact. Like, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, I never thought of it that way, but mm-hmm. but yeah. I, anyway, the point was is, is I know you had your your uh, stories. Yeah, I well, it had to be probably around two thousand two, two thousand three. I was still in college, but almost done. And I was driving home from work. It was, it was really late because I had to close. It was like two and a.m. or something like that, so it was pitch black. And I was driving to my boyfriend's house, and I look up in this pitch black night and I see a light in the sky and it all of a sudden it like it jumps all over the place hmm. and like it's moving up down around like dropping altitude regaining it and I've never seen anything ever move like that so it's definitely a UFO and so you can explain to me how something moves like that this is down like and Indi- then it just disappeared hmm. this is down by gone. Indiana it's in Indiana yeah. in Hobart hmm. is there any like bases or anything around that well there there are i mean there's yeah there's military bases all over the fucking place especially in the midwest and stuff but well, the closest air force one i know is in fort wayne right and they they do fly over here because they fly you sure. know the chicago air shows and stuff like that their planes come from yeah, fort yeah, wayne yeah. but I, I don't see why they'd be flying them at 2 a.m in well, morning. I mean, trying yeah, I to guess be more covert. Covert, you know. I guess. They weren't but, expecting you to be out there at two a.m. Right. <laughs> I mean, they could have been. <laughs> oh shit, Megan's here. <laughs> out there flying it over the lake, not expecting anybody to really pay attention. I guess, but I've never ever seen anything move like that. Well, but the point is, is that I don't think that even if you're saying, well, military, but just like I said earlier, I don't think that doesn't um, that detracts from it still being a ufo it uh, again meaning right. was it aliens it may know. not have been aliens you just can't identify it you it's know? unidentified and it's clearly not identifiable by any government current government technology or military technology that any of us are aware of right and this is way before drones right right yeah, yeah. that's Read true picture and it was too far up in the sky and too bright for to have been a drone. Yeah, because drones would be small. I don't think they'd have yeah. a light that big that you'd be able to see. And it, again, it, it you would you know you would see it move. I mean, this like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Boom. Hmm. Like almost like it was like jumping in and out. Yeah, yeah. it was like phasing hmm. in and out. It wasn't you wasn't like hmm. gracefully moving yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Like a drone would it was is flickering in and out, but it was like every time it popped in a different place. Hmm. It's really fucking weird. Yeah, that is weird. That's cool, though. I like ran in the house like, oh, my God, you're not going to believe this. Wake up. So, yeah, it, it was pretty freaky. Nice. And then. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought there was another There's story. another incident. This is recently, probably like 2014, driving with my spouse at the time. So I had a witness this time. It wasn't yeah. just me. In Hobart again. 
we came over um, Lake George there over the bridge and we looked up, we're sitting at a light and we see this red light in the sky. And at first it's kind of, it just hovers there. It's not moving at all. Mm-hmm. It doesn't move. It just sits there. I'm like, well, a helicopter maybe, you know, but there's no blinking lights or anything. It's just a solid red light. And then all of a sudden it takes off. I mean, it moved so fucking fast and it gained altitude so fast. Again, I've never seen anything move like that. And then it just flickered out. Hmm. It was just gone. Hobart's a place to be, I guess, at 2 Fair in the morning, enough. huh? Well, well, this one, it was probably like um, like 9 o'clock, hmm. maybe 10 o'clock. It wasn't that as late. Well, you know, you make a joke, but it's seriously, Indiana, yeah, it, it is <laughs> it is the place to be. I mean, do, do you think there's anything, I mean, why does it seem like those kind of sightings happen so much in those kind of rural areas? Like, I mean, is it simply just because the sky is more clear there, so it's more noticeable than it is if it had? But you just don't hear about somebody saying at 930 at night, I was standing there on the corner of Michigan and and Lake, you know, on Lakeshore Drive there and on a Saturday night in Chicago and suddenly there was this red light out over Lake Michigan and it darted, it moved like nothing I've ever seen before. You just, it doesn't happen. Why does it, or if it does, I don't hear about it that much. Why does it always seem to happen in these like rural areas? We take the time to look up at the sky. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Maybe. if they are, if let's say it's just for sake of argument, it's a government experiment or the government are testing something. They wouldn't want to do it in the middle of downtown where people can see what they've got. They would do it in Hobart, Indiana, where nobody's there, not really paying attention up in the sky. That's one possibility. Right. You know? It could also be the same possibility for actual visitors, aliens. Right. They don't... You know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. drone-type alien drones or whatever, that they don't want to go to more populated areas, but for their own safety and covert... Mm-hmm. sake you know whatever you want to call it but i'm just saying i mean it, it that happens a lot i'm sure other people out there are going to sit there and be like oh you know that don't know megan are going to be like well you know whatever this girl I was like oh probably... she just saw something flickering in a way i yeah. i that first one i stopped both of them i was at a dead stop and i was like looking up at it so it's not like i just happened to catch it off like like a glare like off my window something or something or, like yeah. that he's like oh, it's funny on the way here i kept looking i was like what is that? What is that? Because you that? had it in your mind. Yeah, yeah, I had it in my mind. I was like, no, it's, it's, I could clearly tell it's something reflecting off the window mm-hmm. back at me. This was not that. And Either the, time, it was not that. Yeah, and and that's why I, I can't understand and discredit a lot of people out there because, especially if you're looking for it, you're going to find, you're going to see things and be like, oh, what was that? You know, I bet yeah. that was it, you know. But see, my point is, is like I know her and I know that she's not she's very no nonsense. So it's like if she says, I saw something that did this, blah, 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 blah. And I can't like I I, I believe her. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, again, I understand people listening to this might be like, well, mm-hmm. I'm not going to fucking believe her. I don't believe either of you. I, I totally feel you. I get it, folks. But I'm just saying, well, <clears throat> and then can I, was, I get into I was just going to say you. Just had something recently, haven't you? Just it? recently. Yeah, I guess. When was that? Was it? It was, uh, it was when. Uh, it was early fall, wasn't it? Yeah. Roughly? It was early fall. Yeah. It was like late September, early October. I forget. I played a show, um, a cover band show thing. Did you see you were coming from practice or something? No. no? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember that. I guess it ultimately doesn't matter. But it was, it was sometime. <laughs> it was just a couple of months ago is the point. Um, it was still somewhat nice out, cool, but not like snowing or anything. So the, the, it was a completely clear night. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a nice night. And I stopped at a gas station there. Um, actually it'd be funny if he's, I don't know if he'd even be listening to this, but it was literally right down the street from Mike Ree's house. So (laughs) it was at the gas station right there on Indianapolis Boulevard. So Mike, if you're listening, dude. I was I was in your hood and you were in Indiana. I was yeah right? I was yeah it was yeah sorry it was in Indiana so not too terribly far from Hobart and everything several miles you know fifteen miles or twenty miles whatever yeah, it is yeah something like that. Um, 
but I was looking back. I'm trying to think. I was looking south down um, the road. I was standing there gassing up my car. You know how you're doing it. It, it was late, but it wasn't like ludicrous. Well, no, I guess it was one in the morning. Okay. Something like that. I forget. It wasn't like four in the morning, yeah. but it was late. And I was standing there gassing up my car, and I was just staring off into the distance at the, you know, because there are houses, there's trees, and blah, 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 this and that, tree line over there, a lot of trees in Indiana. And there's I look, more than corn in Indiana. <laughs> there, there is more than corn. <laughs> Not Indiana. much, but there is. In Indiana Beach, more than corn. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, folks. Um, <laughs> like, what are you talking common about? Common commercial that's played a lot yeah. if you live around here. Advertising Indiana Beach. Well, it, kind of heading in that, sort that of direction. off in that direction. Um, more, I guess maybe it was more towards like St. John. It, you know, I'm terrible with gauging distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like things will look like it's close, but then somebody is like, you know, that's like 50 miles away. <laughs> that's like 100 miles away or more. Or like something you see in the sky, you're like, you do realize that's like tens of thousands of fucking feet in the sky. It's like, oh. <laughs> but the point is, is, so I'm standing there and then literally out of nowhere, I see this giant fireball. And I mean, literally a fireball. Hmm. Like, like when. Did you see the guys at the carnival or, or, or in the car, you know, the old car carnivals or Gene Simmons, you know, when he blows his ball of fire, like a big fireball. And it's got the. I see that in mm. the sky coming down in the sky. Now, here's the thing. I've seen shooting stars and stuff. People go, oh, it was probably it's probably a comet of some sort, blah, blah, blah. OK, cool. Valid. But here's the thing, man. It was big and it was close. Mm. I mean. If it wasn't close, then it was massive. Like, it had to have been massive because looking up in the sky, I guess off in the distance in terms of how big it was, it would be like if I held my arm out. I, we're not on camera right now. If I held my arm out at full length and I had in between my thumb and forefinger, if I was holding a penny, so think about how big a penny is mm -hmm. and hold it, hold it at, at arm's length, hold it up in the air a little bit. It was that big. Think about how big that is. Was it like a, a quarter of the moon or six of the moon? Yeah. Maybe like yeah, more than Yeah, maybe like a quarter of the right. moon size when you're looking at the moon yeah. in the sky. It was huge. So much that I didn't assume that it was, you know. UFO-ish or anything. I thought, I my first reaction was like, oh, like I thought it was like a plane or a helicopter or mm -hmm. something, something that was that was like, you know, on fire yeah. and blah, blah, blah and crashing and everything. And it had a trail behind it. It had a long tail behind it. And I was like, okay, that's either that or then I'm thinking like meteorite, mm -hmm. you know, like it's some kind of big ass meteorite kind of thing. Because if it's breaking, it's going that fast, it's coming through the atmosphere and everything. It's a meteorite. Okay. I was like, whoa, like, cool. And it like freaked me out and it, and it disappeared behind the tree line. That was it. And I remember telling you about it and telling Jess about it, telling everybody about it, telling my mom about it and everything. And I was like, and so then the next day. I go and I'm looking up like the, the news in the area. I'm looking up about anything, crash, meteor, comet, debris, blah, mm. blah, blah. Nothing. 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 Hmm. I've looked it up since. I've looked nothing. There's been nothing about it. And I'm going, okay, well, it was something. And it's just so weird to me that i'm like you're telling me nobody, nobody else, else saw, saw this now granted it was fast here's the other thing i should emphasize it was fast i didn't stare at it for 30 seconds i saw it for maybe seven seconds mm -hmm. so it moved fast seven might even be generous it might yeah. even be it might even be more like okay. four or five seconds like yeah. Like yeah, that. maybe like five seconds. Yeah. I'll give it I'll give it five seconds. That was how quick it was before I didn't because like it literally like wasn't there and then it was there mm. and then it mm. was gone. And it wasn't fireworks. I know what fireworks look like and just the whole trajectory of it and the fireworks wouldn't go down. 
It right? wouldn't be like, burning that, like that on the way down. It wouldn't be that big. It, it like I said, it was literally fire. It wasn't firework gunpowder type whatever it is. Shit. shit was lit pretty much. Shit was lit. <laughs> Son, let me tell you something, man. That fallen penny thing from the sky, that shit was lit. <laughs> but anyway, the point is is that the reason I'm bringing it up here is that it's just weird to me that there's nothing about it. And I'm going, I can't be the only person that saw this. Like somebody else should have seen this, you know? And especially if now I understand a lot of times things they say things like comets, meteorites will break up before they mm -hmm. would hit the ground. Yeah. This is awful close. It's but I don't though. know, man. I mean, close enough that it disappeared below the, the tree line, the top of the tree lines, which the trees aren't that high. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Well, that I mean, that meteorite in Russia that happened a few years ago, that oh. was pretty fucking close. Yeah, that was so, close. It blew out all those yeah. windows. Yeah, but you would have heard a boom or something well, that exploded, big, right? Yeah, a flash of light yeah. or something. That's, that was what was weird. And I waited. And I, as it came, after it came down, I stood, I froze. I was like, the fuck? And it was really quiet. Like, there wasn't a lot of traffic. And, and I waited to see if I heard anything, you know, yeah. like a little something, anything, nothing. Look to see if there was smoke. I I was like, I, hmm. nothing. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. But the only other thing I could think of that, you know, could be like that is, you know, and people roll their eyes. But if it was a ship that had broken through the atmosphere at a massive speed like that, I mean, it's just it's just like when we have shuttles and things, you know, uh, capsules and, you know, would break yeah. through that. And there's the fire. And the flames and all that stuff. But I'm just wondering, you know, if it was a ship that came through and was briefly on fire like that and it landed, actually landed somewhere, mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily still be on fire. They could be a way they, they doused that or what, you know what I mean? Or I, I don't know. I don't know. The point is, it's it's still, it's a UFO. It's an unidentified flying. I don't know what the fuck I saw. Or it could have turned into a USO, an unidentified submersible object. And it could have gone into the, into lake, the lake, Georgia or whatever, Lake Michigan or whatever that, well, you know. Well, exactly. That's that's my point. That's what I was saying. Where it could be that, you know, it it, it uh, put out the flames, flames somehow, you know. Or it could be a UCO, an unidentified cloaked object. Ooh. And it's still on fire. <laughs> yeah, they just cloaked the fire. <laughs> God well, damn, we're still on fire. Activate the cloak. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If it was cloaked, I mean, it's still a, a solid object. Even if it's cloaked, it doesn't become not solid. So the fire would Unless still Unless it had present. a phase-shifting cloak like in Star Trek Next Generation. Oh, boy. Yep. <laughs> but my point is, is if it was some sort of cloaked type of... Wessel, <laughs> some kind of wessel. <laughs> we don't know if it was nuclear, but it was some kind of wessel. Yeah, it wasn't the nuclear <laughs> wessel. But if it was some kind of cloaked vessel, all all I would see would be the fire from entry. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't necessarily see the object. Could be. I don't know. Even if people, even if it was, well, it was just some kind of meteorite. It's just, it's so odd. That they wouldn't that report it, you know. There was no reports of it. Any listeners out there happen to see that as well? Maybe. Ma'am, uh, you know, if there's anybody from this area or that, and not this area because we're not there, mm -hmm. that area out there around northwest Indiana that can think back to around, I forget when it was, it was like around October or something like that, that can think of that and then say, oh, yeah, I saw something like that or I heard something about that. Now, I did hear about something similar to that happening. Mm -hmm. There was some lights and stuff that had been seen out in northwest indiana but this was back in like june oh really mm -hmm. I yeah that. i missed it too i only found out about it because i start. i was trying to find out more information about my fireball mm. it was something that i guess people did report you know there's all these reports and it was you know yet another thing when the military said oh no it was blah 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 don't worry about it it's interesting what about yeah. you Vito? have you ever had any kind of no i figures yeah. right yeah 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 <laughs> I'm the guy that wants to believe. I actually, I want to know. I don't want to believe. Because believe to me says it doesn't really matter if you have all the information. You just think that they're out there. I want to le legitimately know, are they real? Did we get their technology? Are they here working with us right now? That's, you know. Right. I know we got to wrap this up here shortly, but kind of on that note, it's like 
you know, not not being funny, not being like, I mean, seriously putting it to you guys. Like if you had to definitively as much as you could say, like, say your opinion about this. Do you think aliens have visited here and the government knows and they're keeping it from us? I used to be all in and I would say definitely a yes. But over the years, I've kind of been in this wishy-washy kind of kind of mood where mm. I definitely want it to be true. But you see all these conflicting reports that it's hard to kind of believe one way or the other, you know? Okay. But if I had to, I I would lean on the yes that I think they're here and the government knows about them and they're they're covering it up for sure. Okay. What about you? Yeah, that's a loaded question, but I I think I'm with Vito. I think I would lean towards yes, they've been here. The government knows about it, but they don't know how to translate the information, so they're scared, so they're hiding it from us cuz they don't know. So we don't need to know yet. It's all a need to know basis. basis. Well, yeah. Possible deniability. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm one of those people that thinks, you know, a lot of people hate the idea of the government keeping anything from us. They feel like everything should be <clears throat> above board and an open book. No. I don't agree. I don't agree at all. I think I think it's a good thing that people don't know. I mean, all you got to do is look at what happened with the whole world, the world story when people thought there was an alien invasion and all this stuff and look at the bedlam it created yeah. and it and it did too you know i know people sit there and say oh that story was exaggerated well the initial story was exaggerated with um war of the worlds with the orson wells broadcast but mm -hmm. you know there were other times that they did the same thing in other parts of the world did you know about that no like, no yeah they they did the war of the worlds broadcast so that story but in different Language? Hmm. They did it in, I think it was Ecuador. <laughs> wow. I know. I know. Well, <laughs> re random. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ready for this? So here's the thing. So they did it down in Ecuador, did no mention of this is a, uh, a, a story. This isn't real. This is a play at all. They just put it out there. I don't know why they would do that because this came after what happened here. But they did it down there. People went crazy. Like people, people freaked the fuck out there. They all like ran. It was like in the movie. They ran into the churches. They were all blah, blah, blah. All this stuff. It turned in. It was this big thing. And then when they found out that happened, they later had to go, oh, sorry, people. It was just a story. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh about this because it's not funny, but it, it's so you're ready for this. So you know what happened? They got sued? <laughs> oh, no. No, it's better than that. Oh. Or worse than that, whatever. <laughs> the people of Ecuador went crazy. They freaked out when they found out that they'd all been duped <laughs> duped, and, and scared like that. Mm -hmm. And all the people, literally like a massive, giant horde, a mob of people, went down to the fucking radio station and they burned it down oh my gosh. <laughs> and ended up killing like With people in it. They, oh they killed, gosh. they killed like Holy shit. they killed somewhere like close to like half a dozen to like, they, I don't know if they, it was somewhere like, I think the reports were, it was like somewhere around half a dozen to almost two dozen people wow. died, wow. Actu Jesus. actually died. <laughs> <laughs> not because people, not people that died in the, you know, but people died from the fucking crazy mob that happened that burned down the fucking. So I bring this up because it's kind of funny, but I bring this up because the point is, is that so much of the world runs off of faith and fear mongering, fear mongering and stability and belief in whatever they believe in belief in the bible belief in the quran belief in the afterlife belief in creators blah 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 to suddenly come out and say oh well no here definitively here's proof there's yeah, this we came from aliens there's this advanced alien race have been around for bazillions of years they came here they influenced us we they did tell the sumerians blah 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 we know all this to be absolute fact people it would turn not just, you know, Western society, but the entire planet, civilized society on its fucking head. 
Now, I do think that this is an inevitability that we will at some point, whether the governments want it to or not, because they I'm sure they don't have control, complete control over this. I do think that if there is life out there and I, I think there is, I think it's inevitable that it's going to we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we are even now in 2019. I don't think we're ready for it. I mean, just look at our current state of affairs with what with what we're dealing with the the politics and social and a things. big thing I is mean, I don't think the American people care enough to push that issue that we want that information now they care about a wall they don't care about we need to know you know well in all these things you know <clears throat> thing all all the look here's the thing you're right all the things that people care about on either side because we're not a political show. On either side of the the thing, you know, um, or whatever side, there's more than two sides, people. <laughs> um, the, on whatever side you're on, they're they're all valid subjects. So social, political topics and things are all important. They're totally important, very much so. And I think there are people in power who very much like it this way and and orchestrate it to be this way, like that people are so wrapped up in that stuff in the last... I mean, look, I mean, how many... There's been a little bit of a resurgence in recent years, but how many people give a fuck about space travel anymore? Right. None. Dude, we were supposed to be on Mars by now, man. Right. Literally. Right. When I was a kid, I had dreamed about being the first man on Mars or the first person on Mars. And they told us by 2025, we're going to have a manned mission on Mars. Mm -hmm. It's 2019... What are we doing? We haven't been back to the moon well, since seventy six or whatever. Well, now we have we have these goofy guys like Elon Musk and stuff who are taking it upon himself or to the try Mars and, One project, which to, I was really excited about. But it turns yeah. out that's kind of a scam. Yeah, good thing I didn't sign up for it, even though I'm too tall to be on the Mars One project. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a little tall for a space. <laughs> I am. Space I'm off cast. by about two inches, I believe. I think oh. six four was like Just the cutoff. Off your feet, you'll be okay. Yeah, well, yeah. You, know, you won't need them in space. No, I won't. <laughs> Yeah, you'll be like one of those leaping snake things with, yeah. the, with the lower gravity, just <laughs> bouncing along on your on your little nubby ankles. I yeah, I don't. I mean, people don't care. I mean, I I say that that's a blanket statement, but let uh, let me uh, restate it. A huge majority of people don't seem to care enough about any of this stuff. And again, I think the problem is is you've had so many crackpots, you've had so many offshoots parodies spoofs mm -hmm. various things that's what i said nobody really thinks you know the i mean the government comes out and says oh it was a nuclear weather balloon thing you know just come on enough already well here's my thing folks no i don't believe the government and some people like mike on uh uh what's his name on uh rogan's show mike uh baker or whatever mm -hmm. like he he might sit there and say ah oh, come on you know they're not gonna uh, you know, they don't know as much as it. it's like, well, no offense, man, but I I don't really expect you or anybody to totally be straight up and honest about that. Is he the CIA guy? Then? Yes. Okay. But I don't expect, you know, because if he's smart, which he is, and a lot of other people are, he knows enough to sit there and say, well, if I if I really say state truth about this and it is that there's this a lot of cover up and stuff that's putting a, that's putting his ass in jeopardy. I mean, as it is, he, you know, guys like him already come out and say a lot of stuff and mm -hmm. they put their ass in yeah. jeopardy. But the, if you're smart, you know how much to say and how mm -hmm. much is like, okay, I'm not going to say any more than that because if I say more than that, now we're really getting into classified stuff. Yeah. I can't do that for a million reasons. But also being smart enough to know that I can't be the cause of mass hysteria and all this stuff like that would happen. Like if it were me, just saying, not saying it is, but if it were me and I was in that position, I worked for CIA, FBI, whatever. You have the documents. Yeah, I had documents mm -hmm. and I was that kind of person. You know, I would not be one of those, the truth needs to be out there guy. I'm not that guy. I'd be the guy, especially depending on what it was, uh, you know, and to what level I'm the guy that would sit there and say, no, yeah, there people don't people don't need to know this, even just simply the government. And I know there have been certain levels of it, but 
if the government ever just even simply came flat out and just said, yes, we have definitive proof there's life and the, there's other living beings in the planet and they visited us or we've had contact with them. Just that would turn society on its head. Yeah, it turn society on its head. I mean, for again, we're a society where a religion like Scientology exists. <laughs> And that's based off a very, very badly written sci-fi story. Yeah. So if you suddenly have something like that definitive where the government's like, and you know what? That's a, I keep, I keep, well, I think that here's here, real quick. And again, we're not getting political, but this is just kind of more being funny. So do you think that if, let's say if this stuff is true, right? And Trump's our president. Do you think the government would be like, we can't let Trump know about this. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't think they really told anybody since Eisenhower because he didn't have the security clearance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah the president he doesn't even have, he can't even go to Area 51. That's right. true. Right. Yeah. He's got to oh, have the, the yeah, clearance to get I was just kind of, I was, yeah. I wasn't being pro or anti Trump. I just, the I whole, mean, the president of the United States does not have the security clearance to go to <laughs> Area 51. Like, that alone. There you go. What does that tell you? <laughs> He can he and can have your sign. <laughs> right. Yeah. He can have his finger on the button of the fucking nuclear bombs and he can shut down your government. He can do he can control whether we go to war or not. He could do all these things, but he can't go to Area 51. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, why? Yeah, because he's a publicly elected official not somebody that the the military and them specifically chose you know and i, I mean think and, the and, military can hold them accountable for what he gives well, out right information well, something like that but that's that's my point and I, I, again it's not i'm not even saying a reflection on our particular president we have yeah right just now. all presidents, any president yeah any president they're not they're not put into office by it's not the generals and the everybody else who decides who gets it well you know in theory, but it's, uh, but they, they, you know, it's, this is a publicly elected official. So yeah, I can see why they wouldn't want a publicly elected, you know, cause it's a, in so many, you could call him the commander in chief, but I mean, he's kind of an not outsider. Military. Yeah. He's not one of them, you know, he's not in on it. I mean, yeah. And especially now that this is something that's been going on for as far as we know, at least, you know, 70, 80 years. Yeah. How much of it is grandfathered in people that are grandfathered into this that, you know, like that it's it's that's why when people sit there and say, well, by now somebody would know and it would get out there. And it's like, no, I don't necessarily think it would. I think people underestimate even in today's day with the widespread, you know, knowledge with the Internet and everything else. I think that it's a lot easier to keep shit from people than people really understand you know especially when you have that much power in your hands and to sit there and say nobody well nobody somebody would have came out they have people have there have been people that yeah. uh, that worked wow. for the government right but they've either been discredited or some of these people have a they get greedy and they put too much fantastic shit in their story where they discredit themselves before anybody else has a chance to do it for them you know well you know gordo cooper gordon cooper the the you know that is mm. one of the original Apollo astronauts, one of the oh, original okay. seven, like from the from the right stuff. Did you ever see yeah, that movie? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the, uh, the Backstreet Boy, not the the New Kids on the Block song, right? <laughs> oh my god! I suppose with all my Limp Biscuit shit, I I I had that one coming to me. Fucking, they're coming to uh, Allstead, I think, in June. Oh, great! We got a great show, uh, actually. Yeah, Just Michelle's saying. been there, I think, twice. She says it's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, I'm not, never into boy bands, but that was a good <laughs> show. Them and Boys to Men, to say. Out of all the lame shit you listen to, you don't like New Kids on the Block, Mary? No, man. <laughs> no. Well, because the lame shit I listened to wasn't some awful horse shit from the 1990s. <laughs> I'd probably rather go see, like, the Osmonds or something like that. Partridge I, I would probably go see the Osmonds. Yeah. Donnie and Marie. Yeah. I think I bet yeah. that'd be a good show. Yeah. Marie's still looking good, man. Yeah. You know. The last time I saw her on that Nutra system commercial, whatever she was doing. Mormons, right? Yeah, Mormon. right? Yeah. 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 Awesome. yeah. There's a more Oh, you know. some more elite. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some more. 
<laughs> but <laughs> speaking anyway. of anyway, uh, yeah, no, I, I new kids on the block just I, they just don't do anything for me. But um, Justin Timberlake, I go see Justin Timberlake, man. He's pretty badass singer, man. Performer. He's an incredible. Yeah, he's really, he's, really fucking funny on SNL. Yeah, he's one of those. He's one of those like Prince or like you know. He's just. One well, of I those. won't go that far, man. That guy's. Well, he's not as good as Prince. Well, I was gonna say he's not. He's actually good. <laughs> Whoa. Oh boy. Whoa. Can't, couldn't make it through one podcast, could we, Vito? <laughs> Whoa. Dude, wait, did you really just <laughs> fucking say Prince isn't good? I sure did. Unless we're talking about a couple songs off the Batman 89 soundtrack, then yeah. Okay, well, see, I'm glad you just <laughs> said that. I'm glad you just said that because saying that, you just completely <laughs> negated yourself. So we don't even need to go any further. Prince that solves that. Mystery. Prince is a fucking genius. Oh my god. Wow. Anyway, um getting back to no, Gordon Cooper was one of the Apollo astronauts. Um he was I think was he the the third or fourth astronaut to go up. I think he was after John Glenn. Mm. But in any case, um, and he was, I think the problem with him is he was, I, from what I understand, he was kind of considered to be a more goofy, jovial kind of, you know, sense of humor kind of guy. But he is adamant that he saw it well before he got, it, back when he was still just in the Air Force and stuff in the 50s, that, that he saw... Um, and encountered UFOs mm. and stuff. I mean, to pretty serious degrees, he has a lot of, he has more than once. And I mean, he, again, here's a guy who, you know, what, what does he got to say this for? He's already hugely famous and in, influential and all this other kind of stuff. He doesn't need the attention. But, you know, yeah, he, he said that. There have been others. There's other Buzz astronauts. Buzz Aldrin, right? I, I think it was Buzz. Yeah, there were, there was a few that, that um, have said they saw things. And again, I just, you know, you could sit there and go, oh, well, they're just trying to yank people's chain and get them worked up. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't. Why? Why would they? You know, if anything, it just makes them look like people that should be taken less seriously. Mm -hmm. And I don't see why they would want to do that, because those guys are all about. I mean, it's true. I'm not saying this even in a bad way. They're, they have egos. You know what I mean? They're 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 driven in a lot of ways by ego you know those hot shot pilot guys that's, that's how they are yeah i mean that's right? part of the game yeah. I mean. it's driven by a ego you know it's a big part of their their whole makeup and stuff so to go and say some really silly outlandish things just to make people bristle i, I don't i don't know and those are the people that that i put stock in it's not so much like i said you know uh, you know, Jose, you know, Rodriguez that was standing on a hill and said, I saw a flying saucer. It's like, OK, you know, I mean, maybe you did. Maybe you did. I, yeah. don't, I don't know, man. Yeah, we could carry on talking about this forever. We've already been talking for probably like hour and a half or something like that. Hour 40. Hour 40. Yeah, we should probably wrap it up. Yeah. I mean, this is I mean, some of these subjects I'm sure we'll come back to. Absolutely. You know, and expand we upon. Well, that's the other thing. I think we're going to uh, maybe not every month. But we've already talked about it. And I think that we love talking about fantasy stuff. Um, of course, people go, well, this is all fantasy. <laughs> it's like, har, har, we know. Yeah. But, you know, we like talking about Star Wars and Star Trek and yada, 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 you know, and Conan and Terminator and all these kind of things. And I know well, Vito's going to go, what are you talking about, bro? Terminator is real. But um, <laughs> could be. <laughs> it could be. Could be. But we like talking about real life stuff, too, you know, like conspiracies whether it's aliens pyramids still ain't explain that shit nope you know all that kind of stuff there's just different hist a lot of historical conspiracies stories theories and i think we're going to be especially in the audio part mm -hmm. so if any of you guys are listening just listening like on stitcher or, or uh podbean spotify, or spotify yeah. all those itunes if you're listening to us on there um yeah just letting you know this will probably be more of a recurring type of topic. Yeah. And uh, while you're at it, why don't you guys let us know where you're listening to us? Like, are you guys using Spotify, using Podbean or just iTunes? You know, send us a message on Facebook at facebook.com slash geeking poetic and 
let us know because we like to know. Yeah, we love to hear from you. Yeah, we really want to hear from you guys. You know, we look up like there are things and we see that some of you guys from Australia are listening to us and there's people in Sweden listening to us. It's like, damn. (laughs) And it's great. We're like super excited about it because we realize we've actually got hundreds of people listening to this and we're so jazzed, but we want to hear from you. Whether good or bad, even if you're like, oh, tell Larry to shut up, you know, whatever, that's fine. Like, I, I, we need to know this. But also, more importantly, we want to know, like, what you want to hear us talk about. And even if you're not from Sweden, if you're just like a dude that lives in Munster, Indiana, you know, we want to hear what, you know, you think. Let us know if there's stuff. If you're like, oh, I really wish you guys would have talked more about the pyramids and blah, blah, blah. Let us know that because that helps us to know what we want to. This was just kind of like a dabble. Yeah. This yeah. was just sort of like introducing like. Stick our toe in the water. Right. We we like conspiracies and, and theories and historical stories and stuff. <laughs> so we're going to be talking more about this kind of stuff, especially as it ties in like with movies and mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Find interesting ways to make it all tie together. Yeah. And like we said, if you didn't, if you happen to hear this, because I think we're putting this out in two halves, uh, if I recall, was the decision we were doing. Yeah, because it's so long. Yeah. So if you hear this and you haven't watched or listened to the uh, top five we did, if you're like, oh, well, I wish you would have talked about, you know, Ridley Scott or talk about Arthur C. Clarke, or if you would have talked about Close Encounters and Spielberg, got to go listen to the top five one because we covered all that kind of stuff in there. So. This was more just about, you know, all the tinfoil hat shit. Yeah. <laughs> so. The stuff that got influenced from those movies or influenced those movies in some degree. You know? Right. Right. All right. It's been fun. Sure has. Yeah, this was really fun. fun. We will be back uh, before you know it. Just keep checking back on uh, various uh, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. All the above. Yeah. All, all those places where, you know, you can find us. Keep checking back because we're going to have, it's 2019, we're going to have stuff out every freaking week. So make sure you subscribe not only to this podcast audio on iTunes or whatever, but as well as our YouTube channel because we do have video content that goes along with what we talk about in the audio portions. And hit the little bell afterwards to get the notifications. Very important that you do that. So very, please very take important. Megan's advice. And there's going to be exclusive content on our social media sites like Instagram and Facebook. There's going to be some content on there that won't be available everywhere else. So you got to watch all of it. (laughs) Stay in the loop. Yeah. Yeah. Be cool. (laughs) Be cool. (laughs) All right, everybody. You be cool. Signing out for us. We'll talk to you soon. We'll see you out there. Truth is out there. See ya. Bye. Signing off. Thank <laughs> you.